Under the OECD guidelines, there are five methods that can be used to help determine if the relations are at an arm's length. The first three are traditional transaction methods, whereas the last two are transactional profit methods. The OECD recommends use of the traditional transaction methods if there is sufficient information to do so. However, the most appropriate and reliable of the five methods should be chosen. In this clip, we explore the three traditional transaction methods. The first method is the Comparable Uncontrolled Price, or CUP method. This compares the cross-border related party price with the price charged on comparable cross-border dealings involving independent parties in comparable circumstances. For instance, Bedding Proprietary Limited manufactures high quality bed linen in Australia that it sells to its parent company in the UK. The parent company then sells these to UK retail stores. Assume that Bedding also sells its linen to an independent UK third party which also sells the linen to UK retail stores. The price from this transaction could be used to determine the CUP between independent parties, so as to determine the arm's length price regarding bedding sales to its parent company. This is what is known as an internal comparable because it is utilizing data regarding the taxpayer's independent transactions. Let's change the facts and assume that bedding does not sell any linen to an independent UK seller. In such an instance, it could base its CUP on dealings between similar Australian firms selling to overseas customers. This would be an external comparable. For both internal and external comparable transactions, adjustments to the CUP might be necessary to reflect the differences between the comparable transaction and the taxpayer's related party transactions. For instance, the taxpayer's related party transactions might involve a longer warranty period than the arm's length compared transaction, which may increase the value of the CUP. The next method is the resale price method, or RPM. This method is suitable where the taxpayer has purchased items in a related party cross-border dealing, and then, without undertaking much value adding, resold the items to an independent third party. Under the RPM, the gross profit margin made on sales from comparable transactions is used as a basis to determine the gross profit margin to apply to the taxpayer's comparable sales. This is then used to determine the arm's length price paid to the related party. For instance, an Australian company, Handle Limited, imports door handles from its Japanese parent company and sells the goods to local retailers. The RPM method might be appropriate here as the transaction involves purchase made in a related party cross-border dealing, which is then resold to an independent third party. Let's assume that Handel knows of another unrelated company, DL Limited, which also imports door handles from an unrelated party and sells them to local retailers. Using the RPM, Handel could firstly determine the gross margin made by an unrelated party, DL, on the sales DL makes to its local retailers. The second step would then be for Handel to apply the gross margin to its own retail sale by assuming a comparable margin. Handel would then apply the assumed margin to its sales price to determine the arm's length price it pays its Japanese parent company. Note that this example used an external comparable. Sometimes an internal comparable can be used where the taxpayer also buys comparable goods from an independent overseas party and sells them locally. Note that RPM is most suitable where the uncontrolled transaction that is used to benchmark the margin is similar to the taxpayer's one. For instance, if the taxpayer provides warranty or training with its goods and services, whereas the comparable transaction used to determine the gross margin does not, it becomes less likely that the RPM is a suitable method. The cost plus method, or CPM, is potentially relevant where the taxpayer supplies goods or services to which it has contributed most of the value adding to a related offshore party. Under the CPM, using absorption costing, the business determines its direct and indirect costs of its goods. It then applies a markup which is based on a markup of a comparable transaction. For instance, Landy Proprietary Limited is a resident company that partially builds lawnmowers that it makes from parts supplied by independent suppliers, 
It then exports these to its parent company based in the USA. Landy also sells lawnmowers to an unrelated party in Canada. The markup on these is 20% after all direct and indirect costs. Under the CPM, Landy can apply the 20% markup it charges its Canadian customer to calculate the arm's length price for the related US parent. Such an example is based on an internal comparable. This method can also be used on the basis of an external comparable. To recap, of the five transfer pricing methods, three are traditional transaction methods. Although one of these three methods should be used where there is sufficient data to do so, this will not always be possible. These methods generally require an internal or external comparable transaction to be used as a basis of determining whether the related party transfer price is at arm's length. When one of the traditional transaction methods cannot be used, one of the two transactional profit methods should be used.